All right, so we're back in the shop again, and another Shapeoko project. Uh, this one came from uh, my mom. She uh, works up uh, with kids in first grade, and uh, what they do is they get these standardized tests with white pages uh, where they have to write. Uh, and if you know the young kids, uh, they have problems uh, keeping the, uh, the writing kind of square to that page. So uh, what she asked was uh, whether or not we could make a template that she could throw on those pages and just draw lines every inch. Uh, so that she could quickly and repeatedly do that in all of the workbook. So uh, this is the project that we're going to do today. Uh, it's a really straightforward project. I went and bought an 8x10 sheet of our acrylic, uh, and I've got a 8th inch uh, end mill that we're going to chuck up. And this will be the first time that we're using the smaller end mill. So uh, come on along, uh, and let's get this one done. All right, so this is our first time kind of jumping into Carbide Create. And what I did was essentially draw uh, the stock up here. So we've got eight by 10 sheet that represents our acrylic. Uh, and then what I did was use the square tool here to make essentially lines. And I wish that we could just draw a line from point to point, uh, but it does make you uh, essentially create a polygon. So I just made these um, lines by choosing the square tool and not giving them any uh, width. Uh, I did that eight times, repeated it eight times uh, with one inch spacing between each of these lines. So this is going to give us a repeatable guide uh, to draw those lines onto the workbooks. Once I got it drawn up, and that was pretty straightforward, uh, I went ahead and generated the straight cuts for the toolpath. And you can see when I hover over this, those tools, uh, that toolpath actually will show you uh, what each of those cuts is going to look like. But you can actually go one step further with Carbide Create, and this is just really cool. Uh, if you click the Show Simulation, uh, it will simulate what your, your project will look like once those cuts are made. And this is just really neat to verify that what you did uh, is going to show up uh, in that final project. I really like this, this feature a lot. To jump back here, uh, the straight cut that we're going to do uh, is a 0 .02 inch per, uh, per pass uh, cut. So this is a 0 .08 thick uh, optics acrylic sheet. 8 by 10, 0 .08, uh, and that's what we're using. Uh, I do think that this material is going to bow a little bit in the center, so uh, that shouldn't cause us too much trouble since it's so thin. Uh, we're still going to make it through. Okay, before we get going here, what we need to do uh, is to chuck up our eighth inch end mill, and I've been using a quarter inch uh, in the Makita up till now. So what I did is go ahead and order from Ilair uh, a smaller collet that allows my Makita uh, to take a smaller end mill here. And that's going to be really key for a project like this where we need that finer cut in the material. You can see I've already got that material uh, hooked up here to the Shape Oka's board. I've got it fastened down uh, with my clamps here. You can see, like I said before, there's just a slight bow in the center, but I think uh, since we're going to take a 0 .082 uh, total cut depth pass, uh, in the final cut there uh, that we should be able to make it through all this material and that won't cause us any problems. So let's bring the router forward, uh, change the collet and get the tool in place. All right, so we've got the collet swapped out there and I put a little um, Teflon coating on that collet just so it doesn't get stuck in there. You can see it could be kind of tough when you replace the tools each time that collet can get kind of jammed up in there. So I just coated it a little bit uh, before I put it in to make it easier to get out when I want to swap, ba swap back to the other one. Um, I've got a Kodiak cutting tools, uh, two flute eighth inch end mill. It's just a flat end end mill, about a half inch cut depth total. Uh, this is a really basic end mill, uh, a utility one. And I bought a couple of these because I think that they are going to be a little bit more delicate being as small as they are. But this shouldn't be overly aggressive. Our plunge is only like 0 0.02. Uh, we're going to make about five passes total, I believe, uh, in this particular cutting process. So uh, this should be really easy on it. Uh, we'll, but let's get it chucked up and see how it looks. Okay. Now we'll probe the Z-depth and then we'll send this job and see how it goes. Okay, so a couple of things here. Uh, because this material is so thin, I can't really use the edge finder uh, the way I've got it clamped down. So I'm kind of eyeballing uh, where the start or the zero position is uh, for the X and the Y travel here. So uh, that's a little different than perhaps some of the other projects I've done with this. Not a big deal. Uh, and this is really not a super exact uh, process for um, this particular one anyway. So it's not going to cause us problems. You did see me, however, as I was coming down uh, with the Z direction, I bumped it on the stock. And so uh, before I run this program, I'm actually going to re-zero the Z. Uh, I'm not sure if I lost a step there because I did bump the stock with the top of that. So let's try that one more time.
That gives me a little peace of mind that that Z-depth didn't get thrown off by bumping it into the stock. All right, now we've got the X, Y, and Z all zeroed out, and I believe that we are ready to run this project. So uh, first what we need to do is open up Carbide Motion, and I've got it over the top of Carbide Create here, uh, but it's the inset box. It's Carbide Motion. This is what controls the machine. Uh, I'm going to hit the Load New File option, and then I'm going to go uh, to the location where I saved this. This is actually going to be uh, on my desktop here, and I've called it writingguide.nc. But I'm going to go ahead and open that, and it's going to give me all of my toolpath extents so that I know what I've done here. Uh, is what I'm expecting uh, to output into my stock. So this all looks good. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start the router and let's run this job. So before we start this job, I'm actually dialing the router down to uh, the speed setting of one. This is plastic, so I'm afraid that going any faster is gonna melt it. Uh, the tool speed that Carbide Create recommends is 9,700 RPM. I know the Makita can't get down to that, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and dial it down to one. It's a short job. Uh, and we're going to let it run at the slowest setting that we can possibly achieve with this bit uh, in hopes that we're not melting the plastic as we go. So let's send it along. <laughs> All right, so definitely a problem there. That bow is significant enough that it almost cut through all of the material at the bow point. So that's not great. It started to chatter quite a bit, so I just got in there and held it down. Um, ultimately, we know now that we could have taken a full depth pass on this, and it probably wouldn't have caused a terrible problem. But uh, yeah, not the best uh, starting point. We'll hold it down as we go here just to nurse this particular job along. So this time I'm going to try to help hold it down a little bit. I'm going to use the tool to keep my fingers out of the path of the cutter here. You can tell even there, there's a little bow over here that I'm not holding down with the tool. And you can hear that chatter, so it's pretty rough. All right, so I push pause on this for just a second. What I'm gonna do, uh, you can see that there's chip buildup underneath here because that bow is significant enough. So what I'm gonna do is try to suck some of those chips out so that I can actually get this back down where it should be. All right, this one was not a raging success. Uh, lots of help along the way to hold the project down because there's just way too much bulge. Uh, and I didn't think it was going to be as big a deal as it is. But uh, that upcutting end mill, as it pulls through this really flexible material, it's pulling the material up. And as I'm drawing these lines, there's an inch between each of these. Uh, it just causes all kinds of chatter. So I had to hold that down all along. You'll see it in the montage. Uh, but just a really, really uh, manual process to get through all eight of these lines. So definitely learned a couple things this time. One, this bed isn't totally flat. Uh, if it were a more rigid material, that wouldn't have been as big a deal. Uh, two, this really flexible material, ultra susceptible to that lift uh, by that upcutting end mill, especially on the first couple of passes. So. 
So it occurred to me uh, as I took this off that it has kind of sharp edges. And so what I did is I uh, just brought the sander up, put 240 to grit sandpaper in there. I'm just gonna knock down these sharp edges uh, before we call this a uh, finished project. So uh, let's do a little sanding. All right, I know you thought this project was done, but I thought of one more thing, and I think someone famous used to say that. Uh, went upstairs and I got on the Graphtech vinyl cutter, and so I made a little name plaque for this. This is going into uh, a public school environment, so what I did uh, was print out a name plaque with the last name Davis, uh, Davis Instruments, right line one. And I thought that might help her keep track of it when she's using it every day. Thanks a lot for coming along on this journey, guys. Uh, if you liked what you saw, jump on the bandwagon, hit that subscribe button, uh, maybe leave me a comment below, uh, and we'll be back with some more Cool Shape Oco projects.